Hey guys, this is Sukanya Rana and welcome to Streak Initiative. In this week, we've been covering science and tech technology related uh, questions for which are important for prelims 2021. Uh, today is the last day for this. Next week, we'll be starting with environment. And before I move on to our questions, uh, two things that I want to mention. First is uh, in my last video, a couple of you guys have actually wished me to get well soon. Uh, I would like to thank you. Uh, because that was very sweet and kind of you. So, yeah. Second thing that I want to add here is that uh, there is a seminar, uh, a webinar that has been conducted today. It is upon how to attempt polity for civil services and even specifically aimed at prelims. So, what you can do is uh, go. So you can even find the link below in the description box or you can go to our website. Uh, and register for that particular webinar. It is completely free and uh, you can interact with Sudhanshu sir in that particular webinar. So uh, yeah, so these two important things and now let's uh, quickly move on to the first question of the day. Now the first question of the day is related to Arctic amplification and uh, the there are two statements given with respect to it and you have to identify which of them is correct. So the first statement is that the phenomena highlights that over the past 30 years, the Arctic has warmed at roughly twice the rate as the entire globe. And second is iodic acid is one of the aerosols particles responsible for Arctic amplification or Arctic warming. So you have to identify which statement is correct. Uh, now, uh, I think uh, this particular question can be attempted through your common knowledge about uh, if you've read some basic environment related uh, current affairs news, then I think you can easily attempt this question. Uh, see, the term itself uh, actually shows that the statement one is right. The term is Arctic amplification. So, yeah, so that is how the first statement is actually defined that uh, how the effects of climate change and the global warming and all these effects have been impacting Arctic more as compared to the rest of the world. So that is what the idea here is and that is what is captured in the statement one. So that statement is completely true. Second statement is if you've read in your static portion, you've actually learned that uh, a lot of stratospheric clouds are formed uh, which have been responsible for Antarctica uh, related holes also. Right. So the basic idea captured from them that is that a lot of these halogen related gas like iodine or uh, chlorine and all these gases are actually responsible for uh, uh, destroying some of your atmospheric region. Right. So you do know that uh, they do play some kind of role there. So you can link that idea here also because uh, see what happens is uh, that uh, iodic acid is actually an uh, uh, you know when combines with an aerosols they are responsible for amplifying the effect of global warming in uh, the arctic region because uh, mm, recently actually a team uh, it was actually in use when a team of scientists have discovered this particular idea to it so what happens is these clouds when they uh, these particles when they are attached with the, these aerosols and they form uh, uh, they influence the formation of clouds like i told you even in antarctica region you have stratospheric clouds so here also they influence the uh, forming of the clouds and these aerosols in the clouds they reflect the solar radiation within that region and they also retain uh, that heat that is there within that region. And that is what has been helping to warm up the Arctic region more than the other areas. So uh, that is the idea here of uh, uh, aerosol rela related uh, radiative forcing of heat and reflection. So that is the basic idea. And uh, recently a team of scientists was able to link this particular asset with the uh, formation of aerosols in the cloud. So, yeah, both the statements are correct here and the answer for this particular question is C. Let's move on to the next question of the day and uh, that question is related to your uh, uh, space related question again. So, we have a thing called Vikas engine and in fact, it was a news. So, that is why you have this question in your, uh, in your, uh, this particular paper and uh, so, uh, two statement given here is that it is a family of solid propellant rocket engines 
which are used in Aditya L mission and second is that it is used both for polar SLV launch and geosynchronous launch GSLV and which of the statement are incorrect here. So you uh, be careful again you have to identify the incorrect statement. So uh, the answer for this particular question is A statement 1 is wrong and statement 2 is very much right. So if you've been um, in, uh, in contact with the current affairs, I think you'll be able to attend this question easily. So uh, the Vikas engine was actually in news because uh, uh, it was actually tested for a mission called Gaganyan mission. Now you know there's a mission which is being uh, planned by ISRO uh, uh, about uh, how do we get uh, people in space. So that is the idea behind Gaganyaan mission. Again, you should know all these missions, which what these basic missions are. So statement one is automatically wrong. So in number one, it's not uh, solid propellant. It is liquid fueled rocket engine. And second is it's not related to Aditya L1 mission. It is related to Gaganyaan mission. So that is why the statement is wrong. Again, you should know what Aditya L1 mission stands for. It's related to sun. Uh, observation of sun and all those things. So that mission is related to this. Uh, second statement is very right. It is used both in GSLV and PSLV. In fact, uh, um, uh, it is used in the second stage of GSLV Mark 1 and core stage of GSLV Mark 3. So uh, this statement is pretty much right. And again, it was in news because recently ISRO uh, did a long duration test of this uh, particular engine. This is Vikas engine and uh, for uh, the human rated uh, GSLV Mark III vehicle, which is being used for again Gaganyaan mission, right? So takeaway from this question is uh, Gaganyaan mission, you should know Aditya mission, you should know what is PSLV, GSLV. Yeah, that is also important. Which orbit do these particular vehicles put the launch vehicle in? And specifically like PSLV, which particular satellites are used to launch through this particular vehicle. And also uh, like we have communication satellites, which are usually launched with GSLV. So what is about, what about PSLV? So this difference you should particularly know, right? So that was question number two for you. Let's move on to the third question. And again, it's related to your defense related. Uh, so the question is actually on man portable anti-attack guided missile and there are two statements related to it. Number one, it is a low weight man portable missile which follows uh, fire and forget principle and it has been developed indigenously by DRDO and you have to identify which is the correct statement here. Uh, so the answer again, uh, um, the answer for this particular question is C. Both the statement are correct. Uh, one thing important here is anything that is indigenously designed, like I've pointed out this particular fact uh, in previous videos also, uh, take, uh, make sure you take note of it because automatically those things become important. And in fact, under the Atmanirbhar Bharat, uh, um, idea of boosting India's independence uh, in the sector uh, production, in the production sector for defense, uh, DRDO actually conde conducted this particular uh, 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 flight test for this particular uh, anti-tank missile, right? So this is important. Um, statement 2 is right. Yes, it was indigenously done by DRDO. Statement 2 is also right. It is in fact uh, low weight fire, for, fire and forget principle apl applicable to the uh, missile. Now again, fire and forget principle is that uh, uh, like uh, there's no machinery to guide. Once you fire the missile, there's no change of tra trajectory. Right. So there are certain missiles in which uh, the trajectory can change once you've even fired that. So that thing is not followed here. It's just you fire and then it follows that route, which has been said before. So, uh, yeah. So this uh, and why was it in news? Because recently uh, there was test conducted for uh, minimum range. Uh, the maximum range has all be already been done. So that is why it was in news. And... Uh, Again, I picked this up because it was indigenously made. So anything indigenously made is important. Next question is on 3D printing. Now 3D printing is important. It has come in your previous year question papers twice, I think now. 
and i think the kind of questions that uh, the, that is present here can actually be answered through logic also so uh, if you have brief idea about 3d printing i think you can easily mix and match and look at the answers uh, and uh, easily attempt them so what is what we are talking about is uh, disadvantages of 3d printing so you have to identify the combination which reflects the uh, disadvantages of 3d printing so if you look at the option 1 so it takes more time so if you've ever seen any uh, video of 3d printing you will see how fast that machine works right so uh, actually this does not require any uh, static knowledge or any big big bookish knowledge behind it if you've seen a video you'll actually see how that machine actually works in a very fast time so yeah the first option is completely wrong it it is uh, it does not take more time in fact it's uh, it takes less time and it produces uh, more complicated structure right as compared to the other so by that logic i think uh, you can easily eliminate all the other options and you just left with b option so see again sometimes if you know the right option you don't have to go through each and every op option uh, but let's look into it so second is limited raw material so that is uh, right it is in fact one of the disadvantages you have certain um, poly uh, polyester related all those uh, material which are actually used for 3d painting uh, certain metals are also used but again they are uh, pretty much uh, 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 limited in scope so yeah this is a big advantage cyber security concern obviously it's online so uh, by any logic that that kind of issue will come here high cost no it will not have a high cost in fact it is one of uh, uh, when we have it as a replacement for other pr uh, you know production related thing then obviously it's not going to have a high cost so high cost is not there and limited size so yeah so again uh, you cannot go on to produce any size of uh, material here right so you have limited space you have the capacity of a 3d printer and only those items can be produced so again completely common sense related question i think and option answer here is b other than that what all advantages are there with respect to 3d printing number 1 it has low cost uh, it takes less time there is more efficiency here obviously the productivity ke is gets improved there is flexibility of production you can customize the desi design whatever you want the quality is improved and obviously wastages are reduced on the other hand again some disadvantage other than this disadvantages is uh, uh, it can affect on employment uh, right so the new era of uh, computerization all the technologies in fact have a lot of effect on that area second is that uh, copyright issue can become a very big issue with respect to 3d printing like uh, there can be a lot of infringements in future with respect to this particular printing and uh, again there was this issue of producing dangerous items like uh, some of uh, there was this news instances where uh, guns were created out of 3d printing so yeah that is also a very bigger issue ethical concerns with the use of 3d printing has become a bigger issue so all these are actually disadvantages with respect to 3d printing and now let's move on to the last question of the day and again it's related to your uh, uh, computer science related so it talks about deep fakes now this term was there in current affairs so you should be aware about what it means so the first statement is that it refers to the practice of setting up a fictitious online profile for luring another person into fraudulent romantic relationships and number 2 is uh, using ai artificial intelligence algorithm uh, on a person's words heads movement expressions and they are transferred to another person in a seamless fashion so in fact uh, because of the misuse of this particular technology it was a news so the answer for this particular question is b so deep fakes is actually cyber a lot of cyber criminals use this ai software to make those changes in the video where uh, one person is superimposed on the other and it's so uh, Uh, it's so clear also sometimes that it's very difficult to point out the difference here so again that can be very uh, difficult like uh, the communal elements can use it to uh, start any kinds of communal riots and misinformation can be brought in into a society so this can be a very dangerous tool here 
uh, it can be used for defamation of some persons or individual again uh, very dangerous technology uh, so statement 2 is right here so answer is b statement 1 is wrong in fact you should also know what this statement 1 stands for so there's this thing called uh, catfish account now catfish account is where you uh, steal the identity of some other person and create a fake online account of that person all right so i open an account and i steal the identity of some other person and make account and i am operating that account so that is like a catfish account and uh, there's another thing also called honey trapping now that is also use of this uh, romantic kind of relationships where a lot of uh, uh, you know important dignitaries are targeted to get information out of them so that is also another term that is associated with the, the statement one here Right, so answer for this question is B and uh, that's it for today guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching and all the best for your preparation and prelims. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update from Seville's daily.